Hey everybody, how you doing? Jeeps here, your old composer here at the Decomposer Lounge with a slow burn. God, it's been a while, I know. But that's because I've been burning the candles at both ends. I've been just all over the place with um, finally back in the saddle with doing the stuff that I did before my very first reaction with the kids and the nonprofit work. Profit work. <laughs> it's coming back into play, so I'm excited about that. And the other channel's been keeping me nice and busy, and I'm learning how to play Minecraft and... I don't know. You gotta stay young, man. That's that's how you keep the energy pumping. That's how you keep the life in, uh, in in full gear and full check. But to help us out is always our music, right? Our soundtrack of life. From my Patreon members, the executive producers of the Slow Burn, uh, I bring to you the band Loathe. I've done one track on them before, and now I'm going to do five on them now. And so if you want to uh, join me on... Uh, being the executive producer, you can go ahead and check the links below where there's the Patreon link. Also links for the support, the headsets, even my Twitch. I'm going to try Twitch soon with this channel. I'm just trying to figure out how the strike system works over there because it's, it's a little different than this. And so, but I think it's worth one big try there. So I'll let you know when that happens. I'm still kind of working out some of the uh, uh, concerns there. But anyhow, all that being said, let's do this. Thank you so much for hanging out. Thank you, everybody, on Patreon. This is The Slow Burn with the band Loathe. And the first track is going to be Stigmata. All right. You know, I, I guess I have been more diving into a lot of bands that have the ambient ethereal vibe to their production. And that opening, I think it, I think this song started as a, another song was ending because it was a really hard start. But the, the sounds of what I thought at first was maybe a stacked MIDI ambient pad of sorts that had a little bit of an, an aggressive kind of kick to it sounded a lot like it was really the guitars but with really sick you know post effects uh you know delays and kind of tweaking the sound quite a bit you know taking it away from the norm that those drum sets are punchy af they sound so good but i love the fact that they're giving us an in and out of energy they opened us up with this kind of ethereal vibe then they hit us then they pulled us back down and then they brought it back up and then we got into this hook there was two when they when we got into the verse the second chord was a very unique, like, I think it was like a half step drop. You know, I mean, it stayed in the structure of the, of the key they started in, but it was not, I, I wasn't expecting it. It took what, it, what was a very glidey, powerful kind of vibe because of the ambience that they started that I started thinking, okay, this, this might be a little predictable and stuff. Nope, that didn't happen. Then when they, when they just now got through with the hook with us, <clears throat> Not only is there a really unique chord change, I think, in the second bar, but if you listen closely, you go back to that section, I thought it was like another pad of sorts, but it wasn't. It was these great harmonies that were being sung in the back, 
pulled way back, but they were reduced really well with like, you know, post reverb and effect to give it this like kind of real ethereal ambient kind of vibe to it. But this whole blend of ethereal and ambience and darkness and stuff with the guitar and the power of the voice and everything, this, this, is, this is what my jam has become after two years of listening to tons of, of metal and stuff. This is the kind of stuff that pulls me in, you know? That super dark, heavy genty that we just got through hearing was sick, but okay. So at some point, or there is, it sounds like. Of course, I don't know that I don't know until I realize I don't know it. That um, there's that. Then it, if there is, and if it's not being done by guitar, uh, you know, by reshaping and post and stuff, then there is some real dark. Uh, that last sound that we heard, a real dark digi stack, you know, uh, just like bottom end drone little thing that was happening, that little thing, it was just as ballsy as the chugs. What I loved about this song is that for me, listening to it, getting, like I said, getting into the ambient vibe and they're giving us these stop and pulls and stuff with, um, you know, how they're moving the production around, dropping the guitars out, then the change up in the vocals and everything. They ended up with what I remember, I think with the last, uh, with the first track I did on then last year or two years ago, with that dark, heavy, gnarly, gnarly sound. And then they just even plus fire, uh, plus 20 fire damaged it on that last, like maybe eight bars of that, getting that really super low, genty sound. So to me, that's, that's, it kicks ass. And I'm sure you agree, right? Okay, next one here that we got going on is called, let's see, this one here is aggressive whoops hang on for a second my system did something weird all right the next one is uh from loathe of course aggressive evolution all right I'm going to ask this because I don't remember and if I asked it last year, a couple years ago, are there two singers uh, here on Loathe? 
Um, I saw a video once of a singer, but it, but he was through and through that dark, heavy, heavy, gnarly growling just from from way under the diaphragm, kind of just earth rattling. Um, but it totally caught me off guard. This 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 hook that kind of like was was like a power glass, if you would, of like this burning bottom end that was happening, but then this glassy, sick, super sick voice and this tone coming in with this melody and stuff. I don't know, I'm still pretty loose in the head about like a, a genre. Like what is this, what does this kind of float itself into? Um, I mean, it's, it's bone crushing. And like I said, this is, for me, this is like my jam. But I, I get, sometimes I get a little kind of like, wow, what are they gonna do with this? And then there was that really super cool riff section that they played in there. You, you probably saw me starting to do this where they started dicking around with, uh, messing around with time a little bit, um, or at least with the riff, a little bit of syncopation going on there. But I just couldn't get away from, um, I started to listen to that, I, and then it went into this little hook section, and the power of this hook was, was huge, but it was a pretty big change from that opening section, the very hardcore of it, and then they kind of glassed it off this way. But it, I'm trying to figure out, like, in my mind, what genre would that fit? is so ballsy and so gnarly and I love when the sounds change much like you know guitars you get clean guitars dark heavy you know chuggy in the middle of a song it doesn't say one thing all the way through but man what a sick 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 sound the bass had not in when it gets into this hook section and he takes some of that he takes that dirt off of his bass but when the dirt is piled onto the bass during the more ballsier bone crunching um, uh, section, then you could just hear that thing sizzle. Something else on this track that I find is uh, really super cool, unique, is the is the push up on the soundscape um, performance of the tracks. The soundscape is non tonal, like you know stuff. All of those <laughs> soundscape. I, I don't know any better way to put it. Things that don't have any tonal value per se definitely rhythmical value but it's just noise and grit and stuff you know kind of um kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, the mick gordon uh, doom approach in between the dark chugs there's a lot of <clears throat> very unique just ball rattling <laughs> that's not got no, no other way to say it um soundscapey grittiness in it, and they use that in a very percussive nature and that's great <laughs> Well, it looks like it just went ripping right into another track. Um, 
it, it was it just sounds those what I was talking about in that last stop just full industri industrial grind uh, soundscaping uh, pieces and these and and the ambient metal journey these guys are taking me on at least in this listen is I think the best best way for for me to put it is that they definitely don't chintz out on the core of what Loathe seems to be still always and always will be all about. I mean, from what little knowledge that I have, which is that visceral, just gut rattling, um, genty darkness power, you know? And I'm just, I'm still enamored. Whether, whether it's one vocalist or two vocals, I'm just blown. I just, I love that kind of like, for me, when it cleans up for the hook, when it gets darker and all that sort of stuff, the same kind of, um, creative artistry, you know, because I've always said this, you know, your voice is an instrument that might be the lead singer. Some of them <coughs> assume the personality, you know, like they are the head of the band and stuff. But at the, at the, at the end of the day, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a complete instrument. And the use yet abuse of it is mind numbing that they can do that and then walk away going, hey, guys, what's up? Let's go. You know, it's just <sighs> mind numbing. All right, guys. The next track we're going to be doing is, let me see here. This one is called A Babylon. So let's do this. This is song number three on the Loathe Slow Burn. All right. <laughs> You know, these guys have a masterful uh, handle on really pulling you into, into the track with these really unique arrangements at the beginning. Now, this one, obviously, for the first two minutes, was more structured around this kind of, I don't know what kind of uh, stacked, kind of pseudo-digi analog keyboard playing that was going on there, which, you know... Put, puts to quiet whether or not there's any synth in Loathe. It was just that first track kind of threw me a bit. But um, it's, they, they, they treat these songs, each and every one of them, at least the ones that I've heard, as if they are their own... Um, God, I, don't, I don't want to sound so goofball, but... Own living entities. And, and what I mean by that is is that they're giving us each a different kind of vibe to get into where they eventually get us to, which is the heaviness and the darkness of their core sound. 
So to spend two minutes kind of, you know, kind of gliding us up with these and very kind of pseudo fusion chord changes like in the last two uh, measures that he's playing there. So, you know, that's, that's that kind of genius in a bottle instead of a genie in a bottle, but genius in a bottle kind of a musicianship and arrangement that I, I'm really digging about this, you know, and I've said this about many, many bands in the past, how many layers and the depth of the capabilities of musicians, these musicians and arrangers and, and, and composers and the metal jo um, journey I've been on, to every now and then bring that out there and say, we got this. You know, we're gonna take you on this kind of twist in a journey. So this was, this is already that. Like, where? Where are they coming up with this kind of shift in the production? This has that kind of super progressive, like, I don't give a threat, and we're just going to take you. I don't know. It sounds like, also, each one of these songs either had a hard stop or a hard end in the sense like it's a, like it's a, it's a project album. Like, one goes into another, goes into another, goes into another. And so... You know, by doing it this way, you know, I'm only catching bits and pieces of it. But I think the bigger story and everything I've been listening to thus far is the fact that these seem to be, uh, you know, these pieces of music seem to be, you know, part of the bigger project of each album. You know, isn't that what it's called, a project album? Uh, or, or I think that's what they call it. You know, when it starts <laughs> and plays all the way through. Um, that very ending, though, the influence of how the, that ending with the, the I, I don't want to call it auto-tuning because I know as an engineer that you can use auto-tuning for the non-descript um, use of what it sounds like, auto-tuning. You could also use that kind of feature to get that really super sick uh, engineering sound at the end. I don't know that's what they used, but... Obviously, there's no two ways about it. These guys don't need auto-tuning, but you can use that as a dynamic tool, and that's what they did here. And uh, this now, now at least this track was a lot more hybrid uh, with the with the synths and that kind of uh, composition. Um, another thing uh, on this track that I noticed <clears throat> is um, where when the when the singer lights up, it gets into the darkest and heaviest parts of his performance. Where it is in the mix sizzles just perfectly in line with the guitars and it's not too overbearing and I think and 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 the tone of the guitars and how they're structured as dark and gnarly as they are 
doesn't compete with his tone. And what I mean by that is guitars overdriven, crunchy, distorted. Distortion, right? Well, I think we can agree that, that uh, uh, the, um, the growling, screaming approach is distortion. But where the tones are in that distortion at certain levels, a tricky place in mixing. And sometimes I've listened to a few bands where there's been like, God, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm just not feeling, you know, where the, mic, where, the, where the growler is sitting in the mix. But it depends on what point you want to get across. Everything so far has been really super heady metal for me. And heady means it's just all these ambient and, and the, way, the way they're engineering and stuff. And speaking of the engineering, there was that one little section of the drums. I think it was only about eight bars where the snare drum, the engineer uh, turned it into some big washy, um, like maybe three second plate delay. <laughs> Bang, and then brought us back in. And that's what I loved about it, amongst many things. All right, guys, let's continue on. Oh, sorry, got a little hiccups there. The next track we have here, the fourth track on my slow burn is uh, called East of Eden. All right. guys going out with periphery why in my mind am I thinking that they may be doing some touring dates together and I don't know why I thought about it but the mechanics in the composition and the riff especially rhythmically and where they're what that riff they're writing especially in the hook I don't know for some reason all of a sudden I went I, I just started thinking of periphery and then I said oh man I think I saw these guys that um, they were gonna go out with with periphery and all that being said this is I believe the loathe that I recall from what I did a year and a half or two years ago. You know, that's why the first few listens were, were really taking me, catching me off guard because I am kind of just an ambient ethereal metal freak. That's all there is. And, um, but this one now, this one is definitely leaning into the throat here uh, with the ballsiness of the composition and the drum playing and the bass. Damn, did you see me? You know, I love all those freaking dynamics. That's a badass hook. Not only melodically, but what the riff is, uh, how the how these chord changes. There is, in essence, they're chord changes, 
But what the musicians are doing is, you know, the, the super unique uh, riffs that can come out of a chord. It, it, that's just a lot of blah, blah, blah. But, you know, they're, they're, boom, dum, dum, da, 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 I mean, that is so, like, tricky in the head, um, uh, rhythmically for me, and I love that stuff. That's just the stuff that I grind to. Uh, but <clears throat> the way this melody is written, to me, so far out of all the songs, this is the most powerful hooky one because it's really memorable. And and <clears throat> and also the the answer back or whatever, if it is a single vocalist or two vocalists, going clean voice to dark voice, clean voice to dark voice, and that whole thing just is so just next level for me. <laughs> And the tones of the guitars are just so unreal. And, you know, one of the things that uh, I went through early on when I thought, you know, when I first got my first seven string about a year ago and, <clears throat> you know, thought that the chugginess was about the, you know, the overdrive of the head and the saturation of the tubes, that whole kind of vibe. vibe. But come to find out the sculpting of that genty style bottom sound of guitars is just so mind-numbing and in the back of my head that's why I, I think of like i said it once before it's like I, I i visualize and imagine when these guys are just you know chugging away at it like a cable like like a power line cable of like when you hit a power line cable and it goes blah, blah, and you see it right it is such a dark dark gnarly sound but that little spin around i Got completely lost with the tempo. Started to think I could figure out the meter. I just said, forget it. You know, they, it just went off to this kind of like full on Meshuga, Mike Portnoy kind of thing. And I was like, not doing it. Got to sit here and try to soak it in there. Um, but it was great. This, but like I said, this track to me was the one that has, has thus far, has the hookiest stick power to me as gnarly and, and gut punching as it was this one did that for me so okay the last track uh that we're doing here on the slow burn with loathe is called a uh, screaming so let's do this all right
You see, it's it's production and composition approaches like that vocally that are mind-numbing to me. That they gave us, you know, here we are in the verses now, we have these not this nice super slick vocals. Then we get into the the hook that we got into and it kicks up into overdrive and get into the you know the power of the growling and the screaming. But then at the very end, the last uh, maybe measure of that just heinous darker part of that vocal grind there that came out to me that transition is just so insane that the vocalists can do this once again though now this one though seems to be the more of the mellowest one in the sense of very straightforward and very approachable sounding you know by the rhythmic at least that's what i felt thus far you know and these guys just love to mess around with sound that's another thing that's keeping my brain busy you know going back into my engineering you know, Rolodex there. Um, and I'm listening to how many different ways they're tweaking the sounds in the engineering. The engineering on all these are fantastic. But this one has a lot of trickery in there that they're kind of dinking around with, um, especially with the guitars. But um, that, that vocal giving us the full salad bar there was just sick. See, to me, that is just absolutely unreal in production. I usually don't do this, but we're going to go back about 30 seconds, and I want you to listen for the background harmonies that's going on in the hook. Beautiful. It's like a 1-5-9 kind of split interval that's going on, just gliding in the background. But there's an answer back to his melody. You have that harmony, and then you have that throaty from the bowels of hell scream that's tucked away back in there and that is so so freaking creative Take
All right, before they pull the needle out there, because we're getting into some really ambient stuff, I just got to stop because I cannot get over th this dichotomy between these beautiful, I'm serious, I mean, literally, the word in itself, these beautiful background vocals and the melody, yet the darkness and how they treat the bottom end of not only their mix, but their compositions. So there's this huge, there's always this kind of emotional tug of war between this like joy and pain kind of vibe for me. You know, pretty much actually through all the tracks, there is that very consistent essence of this, this fight between almost just gliding and just set free, but then there's something down at the bottom holding you in. You know, let that visual kind of create whatever it may, but that, that it's just insane how they're able to pull that off and, and still be able to deliver a track that doesn't rip off from the ambient ethereal. And when I say rip off, I'm talking about not ripping other people off. I'm talking about giving its power in the mix. It doesn't uh, sacrifice, that was a better word to use. It doesn't sacrifice when the bottom does what it does. And these things, it, visually I feel the mix does this. So this would be the more ambient, ethereal kind of vibe of the, of, the, of the track. Here's the visceral ballsy bottom end of it. And it does this thing in the mix. Wow, it's like this. Yet they're able, they're able to harness that in, into a really so, super cohesive track. And it's just, to me, it's like, you know, where production's got, you know? This is, I'm just an old production music library guy and I listen to this stuff and it's just, damn. I have a funny feeling this is probably going to continue, isn't it? I'm going to have to stop. Yeah, it is. Well, you know, I, um, I, I, first of all, that laugh that I just laughed was actually like a super cool kind of like rinse yo hip cat laugh in the sense where it's like that chord, that last chord that was dropped in there. Um, was kind of this 007 kind of vibe out of nowhere. You know what I'm saying? It was kind of like, you know, super detective uh, kind of thing, kind of a, a vibe. I think uh, one last thing I want to say about this, or actually two things, is one of the things that was extremely consistent about all the mixing that was going on here is there's so much ambience going on that the tedious details that the engineer put in to making sure that the drums uh, had a very, very, you know, punchy, very punchy and, and, and uh, powerful sound, but still managed to craft its own um, ambience, ambiance. While everything else, while like I'd say 80% of what I heard um, was kind of washed out, and I don't mean washed out in the bad way, the engineers know what I'm talking about. 
but you know they've got a really nice big treatment of reverbs and delays on it to give you that very wide ambient vibe the last thing you want to do is choke that up with trying to get that in on some of the drum work because then it, that it just the uh the post effects sound of drums with a little bit of reverb on that would have just muddied the tones up so each one of these tracks had really great drum engineering you know and very crispy and very punchy and um and like I was saying in that other description about me going like this, you know, the, the, the drums really fit in without having to have been sacrificed uh, in, in the mix. And that's, that's, a, that's a bit of a battle for the engineer. Anyhow, listen, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed yourself here on the Slow Burn here with Loathe. I want to definitely thank all of my Patreon members. If you want to become an executive producer, hang out. Um, you can go ahead and click on that uh, Patreon link. Plus, I have a Patreonathon coming out day after tomorrow, and those stay on pa uh, Patreon, and those are you know probably between seven and nine tracks that I do in the same format, but all different kinds of genres and stuff, and that just kind of pockets itself over there at Patreon. So I want to thank you guys for hanging out. Have a killer weekend, and I'll see you next week. All right.